In this first session, we'll be talking about safety performance indicators, or more specifically, leading and lagging indicators, which are types of safety performance indicators. And in this session, you should be able to explain what is a safety indicator, the uses of indicators, distinguish between a leading and lagging indicator, and identify the different types of safety performance indicators. A safety indicator can be defined as an observable measure that provides insight into a concept, in this example, or in this case, safety. Now, it provides insight into a concept that is difficult to measure directly. Like for instance, in research we have things called latent variables. Latent means hidden. These variables are very difficult to identify directly. We rely upon observable variables to be able to identify or quantify to some degree what our latent variables are. So safety performance or rather the state of health and safety of a company is very difficult to observe directly. So we use our safety performance indicators to infer the level of safety. So basically, a safety indicator is some organizational element that we can measure in order to infer and somewhat quantify the level of safety within an organization. Just like we can use a thermometer to measure the temperature of water, our indicators can be used to take the temperature of a company, metaphorically, as it relates to how safe or how not safe that company is. There are several uses. The primary use of an indicator is for the detection and resolution of health and safety issues. We use them to determine the state or the level of safety that that company is currently experiencing. Fundamentally, indicators can determine the overall effectiveness of the health and safety policies, programs, and activities. They can also be used as tools to measure and indicate if critical health and safety objectives are being met. The use of safety indicators can be grouped into three very important categories. First of all, we have monitoring. Indicators can be used to monitor the level of safety in a company, building, department, or site. For example, a construction site. In this regard, we're using them to simply monitor what is the current level of safety that we are experiencing. They are used to continuously measure the level of safety. They can answer the question of how safe is a company, building, department, or site. Indicators can also be used to take action. Indicators can be used to determine corrective actions for improving health and safety performance. How can it achieve this? Basically, by looking at several indicators, one indicator may pop up as being a very serious problem. And therefore, you can direct all the company's resources to fix that one problem. The basic idea is that the specific indicators that are linked to increasing the level of safety can be manipulated to improve health and safety performance. For example, if you determine in your company that there's a low percentage of workers that are trained in hazard identification, then action should be taken to improve the number of trained workers to an acceptable percentage. So you know exactly where to put your company's resources if you know which particular indicator is not really up to the standard that you would like it to be. The last common use of indicators is as a source of motivation. Indicators can be used to motivate those in authority to provide the resources necessary to take action based on the measured safety indicators. As we proceed, you will also realize that some indicators are better at motivation than others because motivation can inherently be 
an emotional thing as well. Not just based on knowledge, not just based on facts or reality. There's an emotional aspect to it. And some indicators generate a more heightened emotional response that may provoke better action from management. To do that, it is necessary that indicators are perceived as relevant and a faithful representation of serious health and safety issues if you really want management to be motivated to make corrective actions. For instance, number of workers trained may not necessarily be as strong of a motivational factor as 10 workers who died or are suffering from some serious diseases or injuries from your company. Relying on a single indicator of OSH is not wise because different indicators indicate different aspects of health and safety performance. All safety indicators can be broken down into two distinct categories. We have our leading indicators and we have our lagging indicators. Leading or lagging indicators are distinguished if the indicator leads before or lags after the occurrence of harm. Leading indicators are defined as indicators that provide information that help the user respond to the changing circumstance and take action to achieve desired outcomes or avoid unwanted outcomes. Leading indicators of safety can be defined as an indicator that changes before the actual level of risk to which people are exposed changes. So these indicators are basically indicators of health and safety performance before any negative event would have occurred. Now there are several important advantages in the use of leading indicators. One, it provides a more direct measure of how well a company is managing health and safety risk than the occurrence of an accident, for example. Reason why is because it is possible for an organization to have a poor health and safety system without the occurrence of a single accident. So these indicators are a better indicator of the level of safety of a company. Now, leading indicators also provide information on the state of organizational health and safety performance, which gives organizations the ability to improve deficiencies before a serious incident, injury, or illness were to occur. So these indicators give you an idea as to the state of health and safety or how safe your company is before something serious happens, which allows you to make critical changes before a worker is injured, harmed, or suffer something even worse, which in this case could be death. Lagging indicators are measures of OSH performance, like accident frequency rates, that focus on outcomes and failures of a company management system or a company's management system. Leading indicators are considered to be preferred over lagging indicators because, as we mentioned before, they allow for the prediction of safety management deficiencies before an accident occurs. So you can fix the problems before something serious occurs. Now, lagging indicators, they have their uses. One, they're relatively easy to collect. They're very easy to understand. They're also easy to use in benchmarking or comparative analysis, meaning that this company has this amount of accidents or accident rate is this as compared to another company. And they're also very useful in the identification of trends. Lagging indicators have limitations. They are limited because they measure the absence rather than the presence of safety. A very important point. They measure the absence rather than the presence of safety because these indicators only come into play when something would have already gone wrong. But because they measure the absence rather than the presence of safety, Lagging indicators are not a direct measure of the level of organizational safety. The other limitation is that lagging indicators are reactive 
and do not permit the timely implementation or preventive or corrective health and safety measures. Because by nature, these indicators are reactive. They only indicate that safety levels were not as good as it should be. So they don't really allow for you to put in preventive measures or rather you put them in after the fact when someone is already harmed or injured. Lag indicators also don't help identify the causes of accident. This reduces the ability to use them for corrective actions. A focus on lag indicators can also lead to an accident cycle. When accidents and injuries increase, the organization might spend more resources to reduce them. When these accidents and injuries decrease, management may reduce the amount of resources available. So this cycle continues on and on and on, whereby management pumps resources to carry down the accident rate or some other lagging indicator. And as soon as that indicator goes back to normal, the resources are no longer available. Lagging indicators are also not useful for indicating the prevalence of occupational illnesses that have a long latency period such as occupational cancer or chronic problems like MSDs or musculoskeletal disorders. They aren't really useful for indicating those things. There are several types of leading indicators. For instance, level of worker participation, number of employee safety suggestions, number of hazards, near misses and first aid, number of first aid cases rather, amount of time taken to respond to reports, number and frequency of management walkthroughs, number and severity of hazards identified, and several others. But they all have one element in common, or one very important element in common. They all indicate the state of health and safety before a negative issue or negative event would have occurred. And we also have several types of lagging indicators. For instance, number and severity of injuries and illnesses, the result of worker exposure monitoring, and a bunch of other things we can use as indicators of the failure of health and safety systems.